Welcome to the 2020 STS Annual Meeting at New Orleans. On behalf of Gorab Ilawadi and Rick Lee, my name is Chris Malasri. I'm glad to introduce the STS University Transeptal Puncture Course. This slide deck is adapted from previous presentations by Dr. Michael Mack, Gilbert Tang, Yoshi Kaneko, and Isaac George. A clinical gap exists for cardiac surgeons who specialize in valvular heart disease, heart failure, and arrhythmia surgery. Transeptal puncture is required for left-sided procedures, including the mitral valve, left atrial appendage, atrial fibrillation ablation, and insertion of temporary left ventricular assist devices. An educational need therefore exists for cardiac surgeons, and cardiac surgeons should learn transeptal puncture not only to treat their patients, but also to innovate new device therapy. The objectives of this didactic is to describe the anatomy relevant to transeptal puncture, interpret imaging including fluoroscopy and transesophageal echocardiography, and finally, to demonstrate basic technique of transeptal puncture. We will first start with relevant anatomy to transeptal puncture. The fossa ovalis is the site of the transeptal puncture as viewed from the right atrial side. Another relevant clinical structure is the patent foramen ovale, which exists on the superior border of the fossa ovalis towards the superior vena cava. In the absence of an atrial septal defect, the transeptal puncture is through the septum primum. Occasionally, instrumenting the fossa ovalis will lead to traversal of the patent foramen ovale. It should be noted that traversal of the PFO will enter the ostium secundum seen here on an anatomic defection of the left atrium. Traversal of the PFO will lead to a superior approach to structures within the left atrium. Imaging is key to performance of transeptal puncture, and we will start with fluoroscopic guidance. Anatomically, the left atrium is inferior, lateral, and posterior to the aortic root. Classic angiographic landmarks are based on two lines. The first is the midline, which is a vertical line through the middle of the septum. The second is the M line, which is a horizontal line through the middle of the mitral valve. Transeptal puncture site is at the intersection of these two lines. Definition of the midline requires placement of a pigtail catheter in the aortic root, as well as a right atriogram with levophase. The midline is halfway point between the lateral border of the left atrium and the upper border of the tricuspid valve seen on these depictions. Definition of the M line requires placement of a pigtail catheter into the left ventricle. Performance of a ventricular gram will define the mitral valve and subsequently the horizontal M line. Transesophageal echocardiography is the recommended modality for transeptal puncture. Transeptal puncture should not rely on fluoroscopy and angiography only. There are two key views with TEE. The first key TEE view is the bicable view. Here showing the superior vena cava superiorly and the inferior vena cava inferiorly. The fossa ovalis is between the SVC and IVC. The second key TEE view is the short axis view with the aortic valve in cross section. Here the aortic valve is the most anterior structure and this view is useful to determine the anterior-posterior relationship of the dilator and sheath within the fossa ovalis. The position of the tip of the transeptal dilator is seen with tenting within the fossa ovalis. 
Only when tenting is seen in both the short axis view and by cable view should transeptal puncture be performed. Using a combination of TEE and fluoroscopic guidance, transeptal puncture can be performed safely with appropriate positioning of the transeptal puncture within the fossa ovalis. Basic equipment for transeptal puncture includes the transeptal sheath, the transeptal dilator, and the transeptal needle. Multiple options are available for the sheath and the needle. The relationship between the sheath, dilator, and needle is shown here. In panel A, the dilator is locked within the sheath and the needle is placed within the dilator. In panel B, the needle is not exiting the dilator tip. In panel C, the needle is advanced within the sheath even further, showing in panel D exiting of the needle through the dilator tip. The direction of the needle can be controlled by rotating the sheath and needle together. The directionality of the needle is denoted by the side arm of the sheath and the arrowhead on the back of the transeptal needle. Step one starts with access of the right common femoral vein. In overall wire, the transeptal dilator and sheath can be advanced into the superior vena cava. In step two, the transeptal needle is advanced into the transeptal dilator without exiting the needle through the tip of the dilator. The dilator tip is then withdrawn inferiorly into the right atrium where a noticeable drop can be seen into the fossa ovalis on fluoroscopy. In step four, the transeptal needle is advanced in the dilator exiting the transeptal needle through the tip of the dilator. This will puncture the septum, giving access to the left atrium. In step five, once the needle is in the left atrium, the dilator can be advanced over the needle, and subsequently the sheath can be advanced over the dilator. Thank you for your attention, and we hope to see you soon at the 2020 STS Annual Meeting in New Orleans for the Transeptal Puncture Course.